Awesome. So now that we've got the technology issues out of the way, which is true for any presentation or discussion, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thrilled to be here. Uh, we've got a wonderful panel of marketing leaders from across sectors, so I think that should make this a pretty interesting discussion. Um, I'd just like to start by talking about the fact that as humanity, right, uh, this is the first time in the history of humanity that we are experiencing technology acceleration at the pace that we actually are. Um, and it's pretty crazy. I mean, it's leading to a lot of phenomenon like, you know, content gluttony, for instance, right? People are hungrier and hungrier for content. Um, every significant moment is now becoming a global moment, thanks to the power of social media. And <clears throat> what that really means is that to be a successful marketer in today's age, um, to get the attention of the consumer, you need to be agile, you need to be always on, um, and it's not an easy thing to do, right? It's absolutely not an easy thing to do. Um, and I think there's a word that keeps getting thrown around a lot, uh, which is called reactive, right? Being reactive to what's happening around us. Uh, but my personal view on this is that to be successful at being reactive, you need to first be proactive. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, set up the systems, the people, the processes that actually allow you to be reactive easily uh, and, you know, move quickly when the opportunity presents itself. Uh, to give you an example of that, you know, uh, we've created for our clients um, agile content marketing teams where people are trained, they work in shifts, we've got prior approvals for templates so, you know, you can go live very easily, we've got AI tools embedded in them so that you can create content quickly for insight analysis. And I think the people who sign off on that are all here with us. And I'd love to start with uh, Nitin, uh, because I think Mondelez, um, from what I've seen, and I mean, we work with Oreo in the group as well, has been first of the block when it comes to, you know, leveraging new technologies like AI to deliver customer experiences, uh, whether it's with celebrations, Oreo, and some of the campaigns that you've done. So Nitin, I wanted to ask you, is there a method to the madness at Mondelez? How are you guys always able to get first of the block? Thanks, thanks, Amrish, and hi, everyone. Uh, I think there are a few things uh, that have helped us on this digital journey. And, uh, you know, if I kind of reflect back, what comes to my mind is, firstly, I think we did invest upstream uh, on building a digital COE. Uh, and, uh, you know, there is a separate team that looks after uh, digital, uh, which includes things like data and artificial intelligence and uh, you know, it's a senior leader who drives uh, that team and the person sits on my team, so it's not like a layer below. And what that really helps us uh, is on identifying what are the big things you want to go after. Uh, but then equally, I think it is also the mindset within the whole marketing function. So it's not just the COE, but, uh, you know, that is very well embedded and I think there is a culture of uh, wanting to experiment, particularly in the area of digital. And then once you see a few successes, you know, that kind of grows on, it becomes a virtuous circle. So I would say firstly, the culture aspect of it is as important as, uh, you know, having a separate team and investing in a separate team. So that's, uh, that's the first thing I'll call out. The second is uh, what we've also seen is when it comes to digital, you know, it's marketing first, but not marketing only. You know, you have to uh, take the whole enterprise along with you and many other functions such as our, you know, the digital services, and even sales in many cases, you know, have played an important role. Uh, so making sure that uh, there is alignment uh, on that one across functions, cross-functionally is very important. And then finally, a big learning for us has also been that as you start on this journey, and you know, we did it many years back, in the beginning there is always a lot of ambiguity. Uh, you know, it's uh, important to navigate through that ambiguity, it also requires upfront investment, particularly let's say if you are starting on the data journey, then it requires things like setting up of a CDP infrastructure uh, and also investing in, in the acquisition of the data. And you don't immediately see the return of it, it comes after some time. So there is, a, uh, there is upfront investment and there is also some ambiguity in the beginning and the leadership steer therefore becomes very important. And if the leadership is constantly questioning around oh, what is it doing, you know, in terms of actual return on investment, it's not very helpful. So, you know, the, the, the leadership uh, steer and the leadership alignment is very important. So those are a few things that have helped us on this journey. That's um, actually very insightful. I think the big thing I took out of it is you can't just have a team that, you know, is supposed to do this and is mandated. It's an organization culture. Uh, leadership needs to set the vision and create the psychological safety to allow people to fail. So that's that's a brilliant point. And um, 
that actually you know brings me to puneet uh, and puneet you know financial services obviously is a lot more regulated uh, and you know it's probably not easy to create that psychological safety to be agile to make mistakes so just wanted to understand from you is it i mean is it more difficult in your industry to be agile and how do you work around it and what are some of the successes that you've seen yeah hello everyone uh, can you hear me yeah so i'll uh, i'll just take a step back on on the question specifically see if you look at uh, the number of dmat accounts opened in the month of june there were uh, is 4.2 million accounts were opened and this is a regular average number of accounts which have been opening for the past eight odd months now the total number of dmat accounts is around 162 million in india right and the penetration is just about 7% so this industry is just going to explode and uh, uh, but at the same time the industry uh, also should be responsible because this industry can be a re uh, can be an enabler for consumers uh, to aspire to reach their goals in terms of financial uh, goals and benefits right with that into consideration i think what the regulators have be has done in this case uh, is created guardrails for the industry and the brands and the organizations for responsible marketing which i feel is in very good stead and especially for a brand like hdfc which has always been uh, uh, known for trust and reliability and building those guardrails uh, on its own for us it also becomes an opportunity to push ourselves or push the envelope up to look at touch points beyond your traditional marketing touch points to engage with consumers i'll give an example of uh, how we are looking at this is one of the many examples that we are working on uh, we have launched a new app called hdfc sky which is primarily a diy app a discount booking app uh, specifically focusing on new investors now for new investors uh, unlike uh, an app like a swiggy or a zomato where you just enter your mobile number and otp and you get started you have to do the entire kyc now it's a little more complex journey uh, for anyone uh, you know uh, so what you've done is we at the back end because of the digital tools and uh, what we have at hand what we've done is we've created an entire digital telesales unit uh, at the back end so if, we, if when we come to know that okay this person who has downloaded the app is got stuck at uh, step number 3 the call goes to the consumer to assist him and handhold him to move from step number 3 to step number 10 then this is almost real time real time so the idea is that you know we are now engaging with consumers at all levels of trades and actions to response to guide them for responsible investment and purely in terms of marketing campaigns i think it also uh, is in good set for us to because we you know if you look at it uh, on a year on year basis the market uh, is cyclical and behaves in in a certain manner so today we know the key points and highlights of where the market peaks and the consumer interest peaks in those specific months or quarters or whatever so we already now planned much in advance for from a messaging perspective or a communication perspective or campaign perspective because we know the lead time it takes to go through all the approvals uh, from a legality perspective and secondly like i said it also you know has pushed has pushed the team internally to reach out to consumers in in a manner and uh, touch points which are outside of your traditional media touch points so i think I, I, for both for the regulator and for uh, uh, for the industry no, i i think these are fantastic examples because yeah. you know for a lot of times especially for people from advertising marketing when we talk about agile people are thinking about agile content i love the fact that you touched upon things like you know assisted consumer journeys and calling real time and that's really a business solution right it, it yeah. goes beyond just marketing and communication and which actually uh, brings me to ajay and i've been with ajay on a ai panel before and he had spoken exactly about this about you know the superficiality about technology and instead how you can look at it from a holistic business perspective so ajay let uh, sorry ajay i'd love for you to free flow a little bit on multi prong digital strategies from a business standpoint so i think we i i come from a slightly basic old school kind of thinking so when things get too complex i think you got to simplify and we don't look at technology technology is just a tool right we don't i think we are very very focused in terms of not getting overawed by the shiny object but the roi that we think about technology is can it aid the process can it do the jobs to be done can it help our company and a brand do the jobs to be done that the consumer has in a better fashion is it enabling us in a better fashion to do that and uh, 
so our product is a is a fairly involved purchase right a lot of people i know oftentimes i need to are surprised with with that uh, so it's not like a, a bag of wafers or a candy or kind of stuff people really get involved into it because RBI had put together that for an average Indian, about 80% of their assets are in real estate or, or stock. So it's, it's fairly involved. Second, it's a product that people get into, a decision that people get into very early. Today, the average age is about 32. Now, imagine a person 32 getting into home building a complicated project where things are irreversible, you can't change stuff and you've got to make decisions. You need personalization. At a very simple level, you need personalization, you need information, you need trust. These are three things that somebody needs to do to make a good decision. Now, rather than treat technology very superficially for marketing, communication only, we look at it, can it enable helping the customer in a very crucial journey, uh, giving him information, giving him personalized information in an environment where oftentimes he doesn't know what he doesn't know, right? It's a one, once in a lifetime purchase. And therefore technology, we are actually not surprised that, that why should, uh, why other people are surprised how we are using technology in such an embedded fashion. So I think we focus the job not so much from a marketing ROI perspective, but can it deliver, uh, create value for the customer? And we are strong in our belief that if we create value for the customer, yeah, it creates value for the brand and the business, right? Brilliant. Um, could you give us a couple of examples of you know the uh, things that have really been transformational in that regard? So think about it. I've got to construct some stuff, and I have a particular problem. I don't know how to go about it. I don't know how to articulate it. I don't know how to converse with that. Now, we were the pioneers in this country where we had nearly a 17, 1800 uh, 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 force of engineers telling people how to go about stuff. Now, that goes to, let's say, 3 4% people in this country, right? Even the largest field force goes to three, four percent people. Now, if you've got to help me find out as to how do I construct, how do I choose land, how do I choose my contractor, if I'm going there, what do I supervise? Uh, we treat this journey akin to uh, getting married or getting your father's heart operated, right? It's, it's that complicated and that involved. Now, if you've got to make decisions within that and you are in a low trust environment, you need somebody who is constantly and in a very personalized fashion helping you. That's where we get digital and technology in the, in the process. So whether somebody has got to put together a, a, a 3D map for the site, whether somebody has got to choose kind of rainwater harvesting per se, whether somebody has got to choose for a particular piece of soil, land, how should he construct or how, how he should go about it, those pieces are, I think, on personalized scale and provided at scale, uh, deep knowledge being shared with, with some of our customers. Uh, that is enormously, uh, some of it is not linked to all the products that we sell. But we believe solving issues for consumers, I think, builds value for us. Understood. And this is a great point, right? Because I think when we talk about agility, we are only talk, a lot of times we're only thinking about moving fast, but agility is also about building the tools that allow the consumer to move fast and you're helping them make the decisions faster. I, in fact, people, uh, yeah, I, I have a little bit of a grouse in terms of how digital has marketed itself to, to the world, right? I think they've, to consumers as well as to marketers, I think they've created a sense of FOMO and they've created a false sense of need for agility. Uh, I think our real issue is that you've got to step back and ask the basic questions and frame the basic questions rather than go out for and have a large strategic thing as to 
where does the opportunity fit? Where does the tool fit? Otherwise, I think the tool is not good or bad. Is the tool useful? That's the question that you need to ask. Absolutely. So, uh, Shilpi, coming to you on this note, and it's an interesting one, right? Uh, the point that he made saying, is there actually that much need for agility? And that may change from sector to sector. Like, you know, for a Mondelez, it may make a lot of sense to move a lot faster. Now, you're in the absolutely, you know, relatively new sector like payment banks, which is also heavily regulated. We were just talking uh, in the room about uh, RBI regulations that you have to follow and everything. So, what does agility mean to you? I mean, is that something you even seek to, you know, follow? And are there successes around it? What are the struggles there? So, you know how it is, uh, like you rightly said, we're in a very regulated environment, but payments bank being, you know, a very new way of banking. So, I think just for the uninitiated payments bank are banks which provide, you know, connect the last mile, provide banking to the unbanked and the unserved. And on the urban side, we obviously are on the air little tanks app and we provide digital banking. So, the first thing to solve for me is not agility, is how do we simplify banking? I think that's the first solve that, uh, you know, the bank is trying to do. And how are we doing that using technology? So, you know, the space that we are trying to carve out and a niche which is there is that while we know and we understand very well that all of us bank with mainstream banks and we have, you know, our main accounts in which we do, you know, we have our stack of money through which we do our EMIs, etc. But with the kind of digitization which is happening, there is always that risk in your mind. There is always that apprehension which most customers face that, am I doing the right thing? Am I clicking on the right link? Am I, and there is so much awareness which the regulator is also doing on telling you, you know, just to be aware, fraud awareness. So when we understood that this is the consumer inside, it was about simplifying. So we got into this conversation and understood that in India, consumers are looking for something what we call is a safe daily transaction account, an account with which you can link your daily payments, your QCOM, your regular payments. Typically, you know, you do your, uh, you know, you go for a cup of coffee, etc. You don't want to do that digital payment through your main account because you don't want to risk that. But with the payments bank model, you can set up a certain amount which you want to spend in a month, you know, for doing your daily transactions, and you can link that account for doing all your digital payments. Also, on the other hand, is the convenience side of, uh, you know, of banking. With the, you know, the payments bank and with the Airtel Payments Bank Thanks app, you can actually open your account. We understand that, you know, people like people, all of us sitting in this room, you know, and I always quote this example that, uh, say, maybe five years back, anybody had to go somewhere. The typical uh, excuse or alibi used to be, today I have to go to the bank. I would be four hours late, I'll come after half day. So we've tried to really like solve that. You open your phone, you get your ban in front of you, you have your Aadhaar card and your account is opened within less than five minutes. Right, so simplification and providing safety is what we were trying to solve for. And agility, so I think agility for us is again around creating these use cases and letting the customers or consumers know that why is it that you should have another account what is it that it will solve for you? It will reduce this tension. It will reduce your risk of getting refrauded. And you have a safe, you know, transaction account. And the other thing which, you know, I think we as uh, a payments bank really pride ourselves in is that because of this awareness, we're almost having close to a million people, you know, switching to having a daily transaction account with us. So which is a huge thing. And all of this is happening through digital because payments banks don't have branches, right? So all of that is happening through digital campaigns. That's, that's insightful. So, in a sense, your business model itself is agile, right? I mean, Absolutely. being able to open an account in five minutes, I mean, that's agility at a business level. And I love how that theme keeps coming up, right? We're moving far beyond communication and it's all about how do you solve for agility at a business level. Um, a thing I wanted to ask all of you is, uh, I, I don't think any panel today is going to go without discussing AI and Gen AI. So, is there anything that you are in your respective, and this is open to all of you, can, you know, can, should, you can start, is are you embedding any AI tools which are then helping you either on the marketing side or the business side in terms of improving your agility? Yes, of course, like I said, the entire backbone is digital because everything that we are doing is on the, in the digital space, right? The, uh, you know, the account opening that I spoke about is CKYC. So you scan your face, there's a face authentication right. which is happening. And then when we get all these insights about the consumer when he's opened an account with us in terms of the transactions, where is he banking? What is he using us for? Then we further use that data to customize communication. 
you know, to the customer to tell him this is what is, you know, relevant for you. I think that is something which, and also we are investing heavily into creating more products which are, uh, you know, more innovative in nature, like I just spoke about is that uh, we've just launched the industry first uh, tap and pay watch, which is again the need that, you know, we saw in the customer, which is again the backbone is technology. You have a chip which is embedded in a watch through which you can make your payment. So you don't now also need to carry your phone. You can just go on with a watch and you can just go and pay, right? So, and I think there's a lot of investment and also not just to do with the, the technology stack, but also in terms of how we're using the kind of data that we have of the customer and using it effectively. Understood. Uh, Nitin, you want to jump in here because I know for a fact Montelis is doing a lot of work in terms of embedding Genia into your processes. Yeah. So, uh, I think we have uh, some successful use cases around uh, AI, Gen AI, and I think AI, as uh, many have said already, has been around for quite some time. So, for example, you know, our salesmen, when they make a call, uh, there is a recommendation that comes to them on what needs to be sold to a particular retailer, which has been around for some time, and you can argue it's more AI, but that's been really helpful in driving productivity on the ground. And on the marketing side, uh, you know, in the last one year, uh, we have had uh, good success with Gen AI, and uh, the way we have used that is more to create delightful, personalized experiences for our consumer. So it's not so much for creating kind of basic content, but it is more for uh, creating personalized experiences as an amplification of a creative idea because we strongly believe that what's most important is a strong idea and a strong insight. And then I think like Ajay was saying, how can technology help in amplification of it? So for instance, one of the activations last year was creating a personalized birthday song. Uh, and uh, you know, while you create a personalized birthday song, but what was sitting behind it was the insight that there are six billion people on the planet, but there's just one birthday song. Why does it need to be that way? Why can't there be a personalized birthday song for everyone? And then Gen AI came and then enabled one to create that. So just as an example. But what we have seen is actually people receiving it quite well. Understood. No, that's great. And I think, you know, when we talk about creative personalization at scale using Gen AI, I mean, that basically allows you to do campaigns in real time where earlier you would have had to respond to consumers in days, right? Go back, back in, take their inputs, record, write, everything. That's all happening real time with AI. Uh, what about Ajay and Puneet in your sectors? Like you mentioned real time calls, for example. I've heard people talk about using synthetic voice for real time calls and you know things like that so I was wondering well, Ajay, if you want to talk about so it. I think uh, it's an interesting conversation last week with my boss and uh, we were discussing some meeting we were discussing about use of AI and we should start doing this versus that and we had an interesting discussion because we shared that there were lots of things where we said this is already on, okay? So the beauty of good tool and integration with the use case is that you don't see from a consumer's point of view or from the outsider's point of view, you see utility, you see value, but you don't see uh, the complication behind, right? I think that, to our, so we, we do a huge amount of stuff in terms of, because what are things that we are dealing with? Materials, we possibly deal with the cheapest material in the world kind of stuff. But what are we dealing with? We're dealing with information, we're dealing with timeliness, and we're dealing with personalization. Those are three tenets where we believe we excel in terms of delivering to our customers at scale. And uh, the other piece is, I think a lot of times we focus on outward examples of where there is an interface which is delivering to the customer. There are lots of internal solves that you need to do, uh, which normally skip the issues that you typically have with these technologies of, of accuracy, of fidelity, and so on and so forth. I think we've solved for a lot of questions internally so that the person upfront is able to deliver far better at the, at the consumer's end. I think that enabling and that empowering, so there are hordes of examples that we, 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 we do, but I think at the core of it, we've identified 
that information, trust, personalization, how can we put together at scale in a very, very highly involved purchase? I think that's something that we do, and uh, I, I could name down 10 things, but yeah. Understood, understood, thanks. Buneet, you want to add to that? Yeah, so uh, we are primarily an app first uh, uh, you know, organization, uh, digital and app first. So for us, in fact, I would say that everything, uh, in every process that we have, AI some part is ingrained into the process itself. Uh, you know, for example, we have a CDB platform uh, which gives you a full funnel uh, visibility from uh, an engagement to uh, acquisition to post acquisition in terms of transactions. Now, uh, the CDP is also uh, uh, AI, uh, you know, uh, integrated from a point of view to clearly understand that which are the channels are giving you specific, uh, uh, you know, uh, cohorts of consumers onto your app, and uh, which is also resulting into specific uh, into revenues. The CDP also changes the weightages in terms of budget spent on your digital platforms automatically depending upon the optimization, the efficiencies of the creatives that you build in. That is just one part of what we do, which is a day in, day out uh, process for us. In the app itself, the messages that consumers get is personalized and it it's also uh, bases the AI tools which we have integrated in the app. For example, there are cohorts of consumers that we know are divided in, in basic terms. Obviously, there's much more complex at, at our end, but for, for the benefit of the audience here, is you know someone who's just begin the journey of investment, someone who is has invested but a passive investor, and someone who likes to engage with the app on a weekly or daily basis, and someone who's a seasoned trader. So for each of these cohorts, we have identified basis of behavior uh, at the back end. And the personalized, customized, customized communication goes on a daily basis to co uh, these cohorts depending upon their behavior. So that it is easier for us also to guide the customer. For example, a new new investor, it's easier for us to guide him to a mutual fund than to a stock SIP as compared to a seasoned trader who's already doing FNO trading. So that again is an uh, AI enabled piece. The third piece, which, I, which is a very interesting one and it's also a differentiator for us from brand perspective, is that we would be one of the very few brands who has a, a very uh, rich team of research analysts. In fact, I would say that our analysts would be uh, not only the best in India, but best in the world because of the performance and track record they have. They track not only India markets, but global markets too. Their recommendations is up to the mark. Uh, and we have reports which come out weekly, daily, and monthly. Now, unfortunately, these reports are PDFs which are long, technical in nature. So what we have now started doing is we are now using AI tools to convert these reports into video reels, into snackable content, into infographics, which is easier two second, three second read for consumers. So in all our processes today, actually, to be honest, AI is integrated in and out. In fact, our content studio team uh, is enabled with AI for anything they would want to do. Uh, to a point also, uh, having an AI influencer instead of looking at a real influencer uh, online. <laughs> Brilliant. So I think we are almost running out of time, but uh, we got some really good insights here today, right? I mean, it's starting with asking the question, what pace do you really need to go as an organization? Once you set that pace, creating the culture and psychological safety to actually deliver on that, like we heard from Nitin. Uh, the other big thing I learned was that agility is not just about the marketer going faster, but allowing the consumer to go faster as well. And how do you build a journey so that, you know, you kind of make it easier for people to make decisions, to complete transactions and all of that. And therefore, thinking beyond marketing, but solving from a business lens, keeping the complexity at our end and creating a frictionless experience for the consumer is what agility is all about in today's world. Uh, I think we have a minute and a half left. If anyone has a question for this fantastic panel that we have, please raise your hands and I'm sure someone will come to you, right? Thank <laughs> you.